Carla Gimlin. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint a realistic eye of an older person. I'm using acrylic paint. As usual, we are going to start with a sketch. This is just for the purpose of placing on a canvas where we want the major elements of the eye to be. I'm using a yellowish brown color because I want something that is light and that can be easily covered over later on. The eye that I'm painting is going to be blue and rather than going with a natural skin tone for the parts around the eye, I'm going to use several shades of grey to add contrast, so the blue eye really stands out. I'm starting out with the light watery blue. This is just the foundational layer. As we progress, I will add more and more layers and the blue will get much stronger. Because I'm painting over yellow, it looks a little greenish, but I guess it's okay because it will be covered later on. If you are looking at someone's eye from a distance, you are not likely going to notice this. However, if you look close up to someone's eye, you will likely notice a reflection in their eye. Since this painting is a close-up of an eye, I want to add this element of a reflection. In order to do this, I am defining an area over the pupil and iris that I will leave white. To begin with, I will use the white of the paper. Later on, I will add white paint and reshape it. When it comes to editing a photograph or color grading a video, there are three main elements that we make adjustment to. The shadows, midtones and highlights. We can lower or raise the exposure, the saturation or the color that each one receives. Likewise, in a painting, we are creating our image using all three of those elements – shadows, midtones, and highlights. As I work on this eye, I'm going to alternate in between each of the three. To create the pattern in the iris, I am painting a variety of lines – some in black, some in blue, and some in white. Alternating these three colors gives our painting a sense of depth and contrast that after multiple layers of repetition will make our eye appear realistic. Now, I should mention here that I'm using for reference a couple of different photos. For the iris, I took a photograph of my husband's eye and for the skin around the eye, I'm going to use an image of an older person. I'm not attempting to replicate what is in the photos, but rather just use them as a reference. In the case of the iris, it is very helpful because the pattern is very much like an intricate web of fibers. It can be easy to get lost when painting so many small details, but the reference photo can help keep you on track. Another thing that can be helpful when you are working on a lot of details is to take a break. You can either walk away from the painting for a bit or just work on another area. When you come back, you will have fresh eyes. I'm doing that here by filling in around iris a little bit of grey. Now I am back to working on the inside of the eye. This is the part of the painting that requires a lot of small detail strokes repeated over and over again. As I mentioned before, there is going to be a reflection over the iris and pupil. I am applying some white paint in that area and defining a little bit more the shape that I want it to be. Around the iris, I am applying white paint as a highlight that will contrast with the dark blue on the outside of the iris. When I paint, I like to progress in small steps. 
I will work in tiny section and repeat the layering process over and over with transparent color until I achieve the color intensity that I'm looking for. While it is a little more tedious to do it this way, I prefer it to having to cover up a strong color if I make a mistake. For the inner corner of the eye, I'm going to use the same grays that I used before, but this time the edge will be darker and the inside will be brighter. A little later I'm gonna add stronger accent because this is a wet area of the eye. Behind this area it's the tear sac. This is where the tears are coming from. Now one thing that I want to point here is this particular area of the eye it's made of two parts. And in order to create a distinction in between those two parts I have to use stronger black and strong white accents just like this that little tiny accent on top creates the distinction for the inner corners of the eye i'm going to apply first a darker color and then i'm going to fade it out into a brighter gray. As I get closer to the blue area, I wanted to make it close to being white. So I am blending it first and then I'm applying white. I'm also extending the light reflection that is inside the eye and I'm adding few strong light accents. For the pupil, I'm going to use only black. My goal is to get as close as possible to a round shape, but I'm going to leave some of the blue that I applied before to be seen, so I'm not going to cover all of it. Now I'm going to center my attention on the area outside the eye. And I'm going to begin with placing my major elements. So I'm going to define where are the creases. So right here it's a crease underneath and then it's another one right here and on top we're gonna put several creases too. Now because this is an older person eye it's gonna have lots of wrinkles first I'm building the crease and then on top of it I'm going to add the wrinkles so it's gonna be a several layer painting here for the upper lid first I will establish the mid-tone and afterwards I will establish where is the crease of the eye after I had those two things uh, done I will build on that more texture and more shadow. I'm putting few dark accents here and then I'm blending everything with my finger. Because I like to work fast, sometimes I'm using my finger to apply color. Sometimes I'm rubbing it, sometimes I am dabbing it, just few accents. When we want to apply a transparent layer, in painting we increase um, the amount of water that we mix in the paint. Now we can increase it, the water to the point where it's a very thin layer of color, mostly like a veil. And we can um, decrease the amount of water to get the most opaque 
uh, color that we can possibly get and that is taking it out directly from the tube what I'm doing here I'm applying different transparencies color with um, different amount of water and like this the effect is transparent layer nearby opaque layers so now with white a very strong white I apply few layers of crease now in order to get more opacity I'm applying a few more layers of white during this video I've used expressions such as strong black or opaque black and I want to explain what each of this means opacity refers to the pigment concentration a paint it's more opaque as it has more pigment and the opposite it's more transparent as it has less pigment and more fillers when I buy my paint I usually like to get the more opaque colors when I talk about strong colors I'm referring to the purity of the color and let me give you an example here so you can understand better if I paint with black directly from the tube that is the highest intensity level now if I add white into my black then the intensity will decrease and the black will lose its strength it will become a gray by mixing colors we don't change the opacity we change the intensity on the upper lid I will apply another layer of white and I am increasing the opacity and also I create a bigger contrast with the inner corner of the eye which is black for the lower eyelid I'm going to apply first the darkest part and here I'm going to put a few lines they're gonna have different strength and I'm going to blend them as I'm working on with white I am adding skin texture and here I am applying patches of white that have different uh, intensity my intention is to use the most opaque white towards the outer corner and that will increase the overall luminosity of the eye I'm following right now the um, lines that I did before with black and I'm applying few dots of white and then I'm dabbing it with my finger to make it less harsh for the lashes I will apply a first layer using only white and here I'm just drawing a little curvy line in all the directions those will be covered partially with the darker lashes the reason why I'm doing first the white lashes and afterwards the dark one is because the lashes like everything else receive light and reflects light now for the top I'm doing a row of lashes 
In order to have natural looking lashes, there are two things to keep in mind. First, they have different length. And second, they are in different directions. And I am building up more and more lashes. But I don't want to add too many to the point where I lose the natural look. The bottom layer have less and shorter lashes. The same rule applies here too, different length and different directions. And as I'm applying my final touch-ups, I want to thank you for watching this video. See you next time with another painting tutorial. Bye-bye!